Hi, welcome to STL, uh, the podcast for 3D printing, everything, digital fabrication, CNC, you name it. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm um, Ryan, or Bassless. He'll go by Bass. I'm Ryan, also Ryan. Uh, we are going to do things a little bit differently uh, this time around. Uh, we're going to be breaking the podcast up into shorter bits and putting them out uh, throughout the week so that we can get more content out to uh, the folks out there who are watching us. Uh, one of the pieces of feedback that we received was that uh, folks wanted something that was a little bit more condensed, a little bit more uh, watcher friendly, so we're going to try and accommodate that. And If anybody else has any uh, opinions or suggestions for our future podcast, please post them below. We're more than willing to look at them, uh, and as we've stated in our previous ones, we do not tolerate trolls. We will come forth and bash you. Uh, so, uh, first thing, real quick, uh, does anybody have any updates on any of the stuff that you guys are working on? Um, I'm in revision four for my current extruder. I need to get some filament and get you that so we can get it printed and working. Yep. Um, besides that, nope. Uh, I know uh, we're in the process of oh. uh, updating and. Uh, making our uh, turntable for 3D scanning super duper beefy. Uh, we have a what, what would it be called? It's a, a bearing unit from. Oh, it's a hard drive bearing. It's from, a hard drive bearing from a platter that used to weigh probably around the range of four or five hundred pounds. Yep. So this thing is just like ungodly awesome turntable. Yep. So it's going to be really really smooth and it's going to be awesome once we get that thing up and running. Uh, so that's about it for personal projects otherwise. Um, and one of the first things that we wanted to try and do is, uh, I told these guys that even though we're doing a lot with 3D printing, I wanted to try and showcase a little bit more on the CNC side of things and to show some of the things that you can do with them and the DIY stuff. So one of the uh, machines that I really want to show was the Mantis. And you worked with this thing before, right? Uh, I did a little tiny bit. Um, the Mantis CNC is a very, very simple, low-cost, do-it-yourself CNC machine that will do PCBs really nicely and really easily. But the point of it is that it'll get you up and running. And that's kind of the whole thing, is that it'll teach you the basics of it, and you need very simple tools to do it. You don't need a CNC machine to make a CNC machine. If you have something like a table saw or a circular saw or just a little band saw, something like that, you could really, if you really wanted to use a little coping saw, it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> it'll take forever, That's and you'll get a lot of arm strength out of it, but it'll work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the nice thing with the Mantis is that it's only uh, 13 parts. Uh, there's more than that, but there's only 13 individual different parts. And it makes it super low cost. You can pull most of the stuff for it out of uh, broken down uh, printers, which is nice, because then you get... Your smooth rods really easily, uh, those are consistent size, and then you can also get any screws if you can find them out of some of the older uh, either printers or scanners, and you can get some really nice Acme screws out of those. Yeah, um, yeah you can just go to the hardware store and buy it too. Yeah, uh, well, you can also go to the hardware store and get the uh, oil light bearings uh, that they use for that. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out uh, any of the uh, MTM machines, which is the machines that make. Uh, done through MIT's uh, CBA, which is the Center for Bits and Atoms. Uh, and they have just a whole ton of machines that are DIY friendly. Uh, and as I was saying though, it's really easy to make that thing. You just need epoxy, uh, hot glue, a saw, and you're pretty well set with just some simple tools. Yeah. Uh, they're in revision nine uh, of the machine now. And it looks uh, like from this uh, bill of materials I've got up here, that I don't see too many like call for acne screws. No. There's, no, uh, there's yeah. three Acme screws, and so you can use Acme screws if you want, or you can use all thread. Right. And all thread's really, it's crappy and it's awesome at the same time. <laughs> if you run it through a die, uh, it'll take off a lot of the gals and it'll fix any of the uh, the notches and burrs that are in it. No, we've never done that. Well, no, I've Christy never. Christy did. <laughs> yeah, uh, my girlfriend was kind enough to run uh, about 15 feet worth of half inch all thread back through a die. That's and an ocean. I love her to yeah. death for it. Yeah, it was like, she had this look of, I'm going to kill you so hard in your sleep <laughs> when it was all over. And I, I, all I could do was just say, I love you. Please don't, please don't hurt me. I need my balls. So you're actually using that in the final machine? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, I won't be using the final machine, but uh, this is for my large El Monstro uh, 3D printer. It, the rods that she did will be used... Uh, they're currently in storage with the rest of the machine. 
uh, but they will be used in the, as part of the prototype before I upgrade to the big one. So it was a good thing. Yep. Uh, it was not for naught. Well, it turns a $5 piece of material to a $10 piece of material by just some simple handwork. Exactly. Um, and she didn't, when, when I told her <laughs> that she could have used a screw gun and it would have made it all go a lot faster, oh, man. That, that look of I want to kill you just came back even like, harder. You jam the thing in a jig and you get yeah, the yes. screw gun on the end of the rod and just go, eh. Yeah. But back to the Mantis, um, this actually is in keeping with that. Oh. You can clean up those threaded rods and you can make everything a lot smoother. You can get much better action. It'll take a lot of the slop out of it and you'll be able to get those precision cuts. And if you want to toss a couple more dollars in it, you can go from using something like a Dremel uh, or just a little rotary tool to using an actual spindle, which will allow you to get a lot finer precision as far as speed and allow you to do different materials. So you can go from just doing wood uh, over to wax. If you're really, really good about it, you can maybe do some metal stuff. Uh, well, you're talking aluminum only, pretty much. Aluminum only, uh, but I have seen uh, some of them actually do uh, plaster. So if you had a chunk of plaster that was just cast, you can actually go in and you can mill things out of the plaster itself. So that's an option as well. Uh, but as I said, you could also make another CNC machine using the Mantis. So it's, it's a scalable design, it's easy to uh, find the parts for, easy to build, it'll get you up and running, uh, and you can even use the Gerbil Shield with it, which is a readily available uh, shield for an Arduino that you can get from uh, a multitude of online vendors. Yeah. Or you so. just buy a RAM board or a Roomba or yeah. a Tiny G if you're crazy to use it on that machine. Yeah, but the other thing you can do too is if you buy a higher end board for a simple machine like that, once you start to cannibalize parts from your first machine to make your second one, your electronics will still be the higher end stuff. So as you progress in hardware, your electronics will still be higher end. So your machine is just uh, scaling up to match your electronics. Yeah, you're bootstrapping. Yep. You're big so, footing. That's how they make monster drugs. Sometimes. Well, that's how they started out anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, and there's a lot of other CNC machines out there, and we're going to hopefully start to cover a lot more of those. Uh, there's, I know Hackaday just hosted a little uh, uh, showcase of some of the ones that are at the uh, Hacker Spaces. I think it was like the HHH contest. Yeah. Um, so they show, uh, showcased a lot of different machines. Some of them are really simple, some of them are very complex, and they all vary in size. Um, we were talking uh, just a little bit ago, uh, we had a CNC machine that's been in progress, uh, so rather it's stalled out for about the last year. The guy. Um, is commuting to Jersey from St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, so, so it's New Jersey from St. Louis, because there's a Jerseyville, Illinois, and it's... Yeah, I forget about that. Jerseyville's a great place. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> uh, anyway... Um, almost a straight face. <laughs> almost a straight face. Couldn't do it. Um, it's like saying Venice is nice. Well, which Venice? <laughs> <laughs> Venice, Illinois. Oh, never been. Don't want to. Uh, <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Um, the CNC machine that was here, uh, it was a project that was, it had a lot of potential, but it just got stalled out, and so we recently um, ended up reclaiming the chop space for it. Uh, Andy, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but I had to do it. We wanted well, our tables back. You took it apart in a way that it could be easily put back together, yes. and the Shape Oko 2 was recently, it's based on the Shape Oko. Shape Oko 2 was recently launched, mm -hmm. so we take the improvements that are released with that and just add on to the new thing without too much trouble. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing too is it uses uh, all the same aluminum extrusions that the uh, Shape Oko uses. So if he does intend to do anything else with that, then all those aluminum extrusions are already out there. They're consistent size. This is the self source Shape Oko one. Kid. Yeah. Um, so I mean, he can still do a lot of stuff with it. And if if we really wanted to, we could probably get a hold of the guy and just be like, "Hey, we're gonna take on this project. Yeah. Here's money. Maybe." Well, I, I think he'd be fine with sleeping in the space and yeah. having it be done. Because yeah. he was needing it for other projects that he wanted to get done. Yeah. And it'd be nice to have a CNC back uh, up and running here, but even for me, that's one of the ones that's down the line. I'd like to see the thing be put on the wall, yeah. and then you slide it down so we get so we get the space back that you already reclaimed. Yeah. But we also have the awesome CNC machine to do things with. It would actually be interesting to see it done like a panel saw CNC. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> panel uh, saw that they have at like Home Depot, Depot. Okay, 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 things yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Cut the lumber, so you would actually slide your, your piece in, clamp it down, and then the CNC would run. So then you're not taking up all the space on tables and stuff like that, but instead you're using uh, an upright CNC. Would you use like the vacuum bed kind of you, system? You could use a vacuum bed, you but I've always... use a dog table. 
Yeah, I mean, you could, in all, in all honesty, if you really wanted to, you could just do it like they do with a lot of the CNC machines and just find the spaces that are going to, uh, that don't necessarily matter for the piece and you can even cut, okay. cut stuff out there. Or uh, even with a lot of the CNC programs, one of the things you can do is you can actually leave tabs in so then you would go through and cut out everything afterwards so everything stays attached and you don't have to worry yeah. about ruin, ruining everything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, by uh, screwing or clamping uh, to an area that's meant to be cut out. Absolutely. So that way, that way you don't run across a, a clamp and break the spindle. Yeah. That is, or, you know, have the piece fall on the spindle and totally screw everything. That makes sense. Or even go full tape, full out uh, table saw and, you know, start shooting pieces of lumber at people. Yeah, like that doesn't happen here. Nope. No, not at all. No. Not at all. Hey, no, <laughs> no, the hospital visit has never happened. Yes, insurance people. Nothing <laughs> happened here at all. <laughs> we are we are very safe. I can still count to ten, so I'm very happy for that. Nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so, uh, do you guys really have anything else to add for? Um, I know if we're looking for guides and stuff. Uh, I know the Grill CNC is a really good, simple guide to get into the CNC stuff. I've been reading it about once a month. It's, um, I'll put a link up underneath the video, but this guy has an in-depth thing on what you can do with the CNC machine, what you can, why you want it, how you want to set it up, and how you want to tool it out, and then he gives some tips on um, bit setup, but it's really good, it's really low level, but it's really, really awesome. I, I love reading it. It's a work of art. And then the stuff that he has to, also has on his website, um, it really shows why you should listen to this guy. He's got a car, like a RC car, that can go from driving straight, and it rotates its wheels, and then it goes the other way. And it's just all those little tiny things that he does. It's really cool. Uh, one of the other sources you can even check out, uh, there's a website called buildyourcnc.com. Uh, the guy who runs that site, uh, wrote a book all about uh, CNC machines, uh, electronics that you use for them. Uh, it's a little dated now, considering a lot of the updates uh, and upgrades through Arduino and things like that that have come out. Uh, but it's still a great resource in getting you started and teaching you uh, a lot of the basics on CNC, uh, <coughs> like DIY CNC machining. Uh, so that's another great resource to use as well. Well, there's uh, since we have some extra time, um, and you talked about scaling up earlier, and you want to like uh, touch on scaling up because El Monstro hmm. provided you with a lot of yeah um, he also has other experience he's got a design of a CNC router that goes from small you cut the parts out and it goes to a middle sized one and then the larger yeah. one uh, kind of kind of um, I don't remember <laughs> uh, for uh, uh, my final uh, when I was at the Fab Academy uh, I designed a CNC machine that was made out of wood and it's going to be low cost. Uh, for the most part it worked. Uh, I learned a lot from failing with it, uh, but from that I was able to really go forward with a lot more. Uh, I went through and redesigned it and uh, made it use aluminum extrusions from 8020 and the um, uh, V-slot extrusions, or not V-slot extrusions, the V-rail extrusions that attach to uh, 8020 aluminum uh, in order to turn it into a V-channel uh, are able to use uh, groove bearings. Um, that way you can actually have a smooth system for everything to ride on. Uh, it's strong, it's reliable, and the cool part with that too is that it's expandable. Um, so I had a CNC machine that was designed to be uh, about six feet by six feet so that I could then tack on an extra bit on the end and turn that into uh, a 10 or 12 foot long machine. Um, that design, I just kind of knocked that through in yeah. uh, SolidWorks. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to go through and implement it because I'm working on so many other things right now, yeah, especially we don't with have the space. We don't. I don't have the space. Um, money. Yeah, money's money's always an issue, but I Every think time. that that's kind of one of those things that a lot of folks uh, kind of work around, especially around the hacker spaces. Yeah. Is that you find the parts, you find the people with the stuff who are looking to get rid of it. You find mm -hmm. some way to make your project happen. Uh, you mentioned your eBay trick with 8020. Yes. Or do you want to keep that secret? Uh, if you're interested, it's not really a secret. If you're interested in finding anything that's extruded aluminum, uh, any kind of 8020 parts, go on eBay, find the official 8020 store, and you can get any other cutoff from uh, official projects that they did that they no longer need. So some stuff might be six inches long, it might be 10 feet long. 
uh, and you can find that stuff really cheap, really easily. They will send it to you uh, really quickly, and it's it's a great resource to have. Uh, I know I got a lot of, I probably got about 500 bucks worth of extrude aluminum for about 200. So it was it was a great little resource to have. And this just, stands for good advice at any um, metal supply store you get, go to, right? Yeah, I mean, cuts are, yeah. Uh, anytime you go to like a supply uh, company, you can look for their uh, cutoffs. So that's always a great resource. You're in an industrial town, you can usually get cutoffs from this big to the size of your head out of pretty much any material yeah. that you want. And you can even and again Shapiro's. Yeah, yeah Shapiro's. Shapiro's. Uh, one of the places too that we were talking about getting uh, reclaimed hardened steel was uh, if you've got a place that does uh, tool rental, uh, you can get hardened steel billets uh, from them. That was oh. one of the things you were talking about. Oh, yeah. uh, tell us about it. Your um, yep. pins. Yep, and that's. It's always nice to be uh, courteous and kind to people when you come into a place like that. And then if you can. Because they have to pay to get rid of their steel, usually, because steel is almost worthless unless you get it in several tons. And so, because of the. Especially in a tool rental business, the, the number of different style of mechanics you can come across and. Uh, all sorts of parts. So you'll come across like chunks of steel that are worthless to them, but are would cost you at least fifty to hundred dollars just to get that piece of steel that you could now work with for next to nothing. So it's excellent to actually have people uh, you know in that kind of industry. Yeah. So we're kind of getting off course. Yeah. We're going to try to get back to the Mantis Mill and why we were talking about it. But uh, one of the reasons that it's great to have the Mantis isn't just to get started, but it's also so that uh, for a hackerspace or if you want to even try and start a fab lab, uh, it's a great resource to have for doing uh, electronics, uh, not it's just... a combination tool. Yeah, it's, a very, it's very much a combination tool. So you can do a lot of milling stuff with it, uh, but at the same time, you can also create circuit boards and then stuff, learn how to solder and stuff those boards uh, so that you can make even more electronics, or you can make an even bigger CNC, or a 3D printer, or a laser cutter, any of those kinds of machines, just from this one little one that'll cut out circuit boards. Um, but then from there, you can also make molds for uh, for parts, so if you uh, had some uh, industrial grade resin that you would like to cast into those molds, you can do that. That'll give you uh, much tougher, hardened plastic parts, and so from there, you can go through and make really whatever you'd like. Um, and working with the Mantis will actually give you the experience to help you run yeah. all of those machines. You'll know your mistakes on a cheap machine rather than an expensive machine. Yeah, which is better. a big deal. Yeah, it's a lot better. Um, and yeah, just uh, from there, that'll also teach you, well, you want to upgrade this before you upgrade that, and the different parts that you want to look for and where your weakest points are going to be. Because in general, your machines like the Mantis are going to fail at the weakest point. So you always want to figure out what that is and then try and upgrade around that or find the part that's going to help the machine uh, operate the best even if it's not upgrading the weakest point and go from there. So if that's switching from a Dremel to an actual spindle so it's a motorized uh, collet and everything like that, they can hold all kinds of different shape bits uh, to give you different size cuts, different types of cuts, even do some little uh, filigree type stuff, that's an option. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. That's pretty much all of our time for now. Yeah. This that's topic. <laughs> that's about all we have for uh, this short episode. And as we said, this is going to be a new format that we're trying. So until next time, I'm Scott Rocca. Uh, Bass. And I'm Ryan. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us on STL. <laughs>